Today we're going to pour a new concrete patio next to this old concrete patio. And then once they put a roof over both slabs, we're going to do a sprayed concrete overlay so that the floor on the new slab and the old slab will match. This video is sponsored by DeWalt. Okay, the way this is set up, this has to be perfectly square because we're putting a roof for a porch over it. This existing slab was out of square when it was originally poured. So we're going to take the new DeWalt concrete saw and portable water feed. And we're going to cut that section off of the patio. Gas powered concrete saws have always been pretty annoying to me. I don't use them very often, so I always forget to bring the tank of mixed gas and I don't really like dragging out a water hose to hook up the water feed. This new setup by DeWalt solves all of those problems. This is the new DeWalt battery powered concrete saw and portable water feed. Not bad, now it's perfectly straight down the line. We already set all the forms and the grade on this job, but before we pour it, I wanted to get out the DeWalt laser transit one more time to check the elevation on this slab. I'm really paranoid about making sure that water is gonna drain where we want it to, and this is the best way to do that. You went and got a battery for no reason. Is that charged? Yes. Okay. So, turn it on. Whenever you turn on the transit, it always blinks a few times and then eventually you'll see the laser start to spin and that's how we know that it's level. Okay, this is our new DeWalt laser transit and this projects a level line across this whole area and we know that we want one inch of fall from there to there. This spot is our highest point and we want everything to go downhill from there, that corner. So we're gonna set the laser up based off of this. I want to pause it really quick so I can explain to you how this works. The DeWalt laser transit is projecting a level line and it's approximately right here on the house. And this device is the receiver for that laser. And based on where the laser is hitting on this receiver, the receiver will tell you whether you are too high or too low. And whenever it stops beeping and goes to a solid tone, that's how you know that you're level to the laser. Okay, so we just set the height of this based on that concrete right there. So it's level there, so it says four foot, four and three quarters. And we want it to go downhill an inch. So I raise that up to five and three quarters. And when we hit set on this corner, it should beep as level. Which it does. So that means there's one inch of fall from there to there. Okay, now we know there's one inch of fall from there to there. And the fall from there to there, we're gonna do one eighth of an inch per foot over 15 feet, so it's about two inches. And we're gonna adjust this up. You have to go back, it's opposites. So if you want to go downhill, you have to go up. So we're gonna go up two inches. So four and three quarters, five and three quarters, six and three quarters. Then we go over here to our spot on the board. Like I said earlier, we're just rechecking the elevations of this pad. So if you look really closely, there's a screw in the side of that board and that's what we've designated as the top of the slab right here. So since we adjusted that up two inches and now it's beeping like it's level, that means it's two inches lower than our high point on the other side of the slab. So we form that high and we're just gonna chalk a line from that point that I just measured with the transit to our board over there. Eighth inch per foot fall this way, one inch over the whole length this way, and we'll be good to go. We're probably gonna get a lot of grief for forming that high, but uh, we do that all the time because if you look at the ground out here, it slipped that way really badly and we could have gotten that down by digging up here to get the form below ground, but we just formed it high because it's easier to race up with all these kickers when it's tall. And we're gonna chalk the line on the other side to the right height, and it's gonna come out the same anyways. So by forming it high, we actually save some lumber, not having to cut lumber. And it saves a lot of us, a lot of digging for us having to put that board in the ground. We put a metal blade on the DeWalt concrete saw, which was really nice since we already have it on the job site. We cut all of our rebar and tied it all in. We dug all of our pier holes and we passed inspection and now we're ready to pour the concrete. It's gonna end up being the floor of a screen porch. We're gonna be using the new concrete tools from DeWalt. We have new floats and new trowels and new edgers and new groovers. I've had these in the basement for a little while and our guys are excited to be using new tools today. This 
This is for all the YouTube, all the all the crazy YouTube commenters. You ready? Yeah. Look, three bars being pulled up. <laughs> yeah. First thing we do when we pour concrete, once we get it down on the ground and we get it raked out to where we think it's pretty close to being the right height, we'll take our hand floats and we will float the concrete up to the chalk lines that we put on the edges of the pad. What's your initial reaction after five swipes? Oh, it's great. When we're hand floating the edges, it really needs to be perfectly up to our chalk line because once we go to strike the concrete off, we're going to keep an eye on the areas that we've hand floated and make sure that our strike board is riding right on top of that concrete. See, the danger for me is if I don't see the grade till I can't. That's I, can't wait, I can't wait for the comments. We need to have that on there. That guy doesn't know what he's doing. He's ruining the whole thing. That was my brother and my business partner and the buggy driver today. I need to get him on here more often. Once we get the concrete poured and struck off, we're going to run our bull float over it and we're just trying to push the gravel down and work the cream to the top of the concrete. This is Corey that you're seeing in all these videos finishing the concrete. He's really our expert concrete finisher. He joined up with us about three years ago and I really let him run the jobs whenever we're pouring concrete. And he always likes to get out on knee boards and hand float the pads. Not really sure why, I should ask him why, but that's just his preference. The people are gonna ask about us holding this high, but... I'm gonna show we ran an edge down there. Once we're done flooding the pad, we're going to run the edger around the pad one more time. And then once we finish with that, we're going to take our hand float and we're going to float all the edges to get the line out that the edger leaves. And then we'll be ready to put the brim finish on it. We're going to end up putting a concrete overlay over both of these pads, the pad that we're brooming now and the old pad next to it. So we're not really concerned with the perfect broom finish here. We're just trying to put texture on it so that our overlay can easily bond to it. We're going to let this cure for about two weeks and we'll be back to do the sprayed concrete overlay. Alright, we're back. It's been two weeks. The new concrete is cured. They've built the porch on the pad that we poured, and now we're gonna do a sprayed concrete overlay. We brought a shot blaster to prep this pad, but we're having some issues with it, so we had to switch over to using grinders. Grinding this by hand is not ideal, but they were definitely good enough to get the job done. I'm still blown away that we can do something like this off of battery power. We're using the DeWalt battery-powered hand grinder and the battery-powered HEPAVAC on this pad in the front of the screen, and we're also using our corded DeWalt grinder and HEPAVAC in the back most houses only have one electrical circuit for all of the exterior plugs, so you can't usually run but one grinder at a time. Thankfully, we're also able to use our battery power setup so we could get this job done twice as fast. And in case you're wondering, we didn't really see a difference in the production of the battery power grinder versus the corded grinder. Okay. I'm okay with it. I'm just gonna tip it in like this. Once we got the concrete prepped, we vacuumed it clean. Now we're gonna roll down the primer and we'll be ready to apply the overlay. I really thought of everything. They even brought a holder for the chuck. People usually put it on the cord. And since this doesn't have a cord, gotta come up with a new plan. We had a bunch of batteries charging because I wasn't really sure what to expect from this new DeWalt battery powered concrete mixer. I was surprised at how the drill did not seem to struggle at all the whole time we did this job. I think we probably mixed five or six bags and we still didn't wear out the first battery that we used. First step on a sprayed concrete overlay is to do what we call a slurry coat. I am not sure if that's the official name, but that is what they called it when I learned it at this place in Florida like 23 years ago. Um, so call it a slurry coat. I think some people call it a grout coat, whatever the case. We're just trying to trowel the concrete across the entire floor to get out any imperfections and get us a smooth surface so that we can start our sprayed concrete overlay. We went to lunch once we got this down so that we give it plenty of time to cure. 
And once we got back, we scraped any high spots or any ridges or chips or anything like that. And then once we got it clean, we're ready to apply the sprayed concrete overlay. This is the same mix as last time, but we're gonna make it a little bit wetter. It'll help to make it a little easier to spray. We're gonna pour this into a hopper gun and we're gonna have our compressor set on a low pressure so that this sprays out an even splatter, I guess is the word. So it sprays out an even coat of concrete across the whole floor. Here's an up close shot so you can see the look that we're going for before we start troweling the surface. We're gonna walk out on this in spiked shoes. We're gonna take a hand trowel and we're just gonna knock down all of the high spots in the texture that we just sprayed. And that leaves what's called a knockdown finish. And hopefully that's gonna be pretty even across the entire patio. There really wasn't anything wrong with either of these pads that we're overlaying today. We just really didn't like the way that it looked. We had the brand new pad right next to the old patio and it just looked mismatched. So by doing this overlay, we're gonna have it all be the same texture and same color so that it won't look like an afterthought. All right, we're done for the day. We're gonna let this cure overnight and we'll be back tomorrow to apply the solid colored top coat. The wireless HEPAVAC has a remote control that will turn it on and off. So we thought it'd be fun to test the range of it. <laughs> you can walk by, it's fine. Troy, he's out of, he's out of range. We got, that right, worked again. We tested the range and our conclusion on the range is that it's far enough. What do you say? Yeah. Seems like it will work just fine with a 200 foot hose. Whenever we do a knockdown finish, there are always a lot of high spots that need to be scraped smooth. So we're gonna scrape this entire patio a few times and then we're gonna blow it clean and it will be ready for the solid colored sealer. I've been making online courses and I have a new one coming out any day now that teaches you how to do concrete overlays. It's gonna cover sprayed concrete overlays and then some other videos you've seen on the channel which are trout concrete overlays, stained concrete overlays, and patterned overlays. So it's gonna cover all of those things. If you wanna learn more about that course, it'll be the first link in the description down below. And I really love teaching these courses. I love that they're all entirely online so you can watch it from your own home at your own pace. And I'm always available to answer any questions in the Facebook group. We're also gonna be doing monthly online coaching that'll be included as part of a lot of the courses. So if you wanna learn more about that, it'll be the first link in the description down below. And big thank you to DeWalt for sponsoring this video. All the tools that you've seen will be linked in the description below. So make sure you check those out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.